like to call to order the June 30th, 2015 meeting of the Mill Creek Township Supervisors. We'll begin with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there any public comment on agenda items other than development or rezoning applications? Hearing none, we move on to approval of minutes. We have before us the June 9th meeting minutes. If there's no addition or corrections to the minutes, I'll entertain a motion. I so move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second it. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Approval of bills. We have before us the bills of 616 and 630 for the township, and the bills of uh, 623 for the sewer revenue fund. If there's no additions or corrections to the bills, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move we pay the bills. And I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Next, we have a subdivision plan, Chuck W. and Judy A. Kindle. A small subdivision plan to show the replot of existing lots 1, 2, and an adjoining parcel into two new parcels, parcel A and parcel B, and to make existing lot 3 an integral part of the neighboring parcel, Erie County Tax Parcel Number 33-101-474-44. Located along the north line of East Gore Road, west of Wattsburg Road, in Tract 339. Mr. Morris? Planning Commission at their June 2nd meeting recommended approval with two requirements. One is that Lot 3 is to become an integral part of the neighboring parcel, Three County Tax Parcel 33 105-474-44, and they were to label the zoning boundary lines on the Mylar. That has been done. We received a revised Mylar today. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the subdivision? If you come up here, sir, give us your name and address and please sign in. Certainly. Uh, John Laird, 1557 <coughs> West 26th Street from David Laird Associates. Uh, we worked and uh, performed the subdivision replot on behalf of uh, Mr. Kindle and his wife, and uh, are here to simply answer any questions you may have and request your approval of the plan. And you understand the requirements that Mr. Morris stated? Yes. Okay. Is there any questions from the board? None for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of the subdivision? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? to the subdivision. Okay, hearing none, is there a motion from the board? Yes, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve that subdivision as presented with the conditions. I'll second it. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have a public hearing on a petition requesting a change in zoning classification. This is HH&R Partnership for property located at 3746 West 12th Street, now zone C2, General Commercial District, and R1, Single Family Residential District, asking for a change in classification of the R1 Single Family Residential District portion to C2, General Commercial District. Julie? The Mill Creek Township Planning Commission recommended approval at their May 12th meeting Erie County Planning reported that the proposed zoning change is generally consistent with the Erie County Comprehensive Plan and the Mill Creek Township Future Land Use Plan shows commercial. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Julie, that more or less just sort of squares up that commercial district there, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. It's just that one little parcel that's yes. still residential. Okay. Okay, is there anyone here to speak in favor of the rezoning or change in the zoning? Okay, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the rezoning? I noticed you got up, sir. Were you? I was just here to represent HHR. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, would you like to come up? <laughs> okay. No. You, you don't want it, do you? <laughs> okay. Uh, as no one uh, has spoken opposition to it, is there a motion from the board? I'll move approval. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is announcement of bids and quotations received. Uh, these all pertain, there's a, a number of them, they all pertain to uh, departments uh, under Mr. McGrath, so we'll turn it over to him. Okay, the first is from uh, the Parks and Recreation Department. Ashley Marsteller would like to purchase uh, gymnastics training pits. Uh, the ones currently in use are getting old and also smaller than uh, what is recommended. Uh, she received or was able to solicit four quotes. The first was from UCS for $2,736. Second was from BSN, $4,599.98. U.S. Games, $3,299.98. And GM our type landing gym, uh, $2,758. Uh, it is Ashley's recommendation that we purchase from UCS for $2,736, and I'll move approval of that. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. And I vote yes. Second is for um, the tree removal that we talked about several weeks ago at Lakewood Park. Uh, for those who may not be familiar um, a tree came down in a windstorm a couple of months ago and uh, took out a car and um, at that time we had our in-house uh, arborists go down and take a look at the trees in the park this was at the recommendation of our insurance company and uh, at that time our arborists suggested that several trees many trees be taken down looking for a second opinion we had two state arborists come in um, and they reached the same conclusion. So um, Ashley solicited quotes from some local tree uh, services, and I'll go through those. This is for the removal of 15 trees and 16 stumps. The extra stump is from the tree that fell down. Um, the first is from Hazlitt Tree Service for $13,335. Dibble Tree Service, $8,500. Jefferson Tree Service, $5,025. And J. Thomas Tree Service, $12,435. It's Ashley's recommendation to award the contract to Jefferson Tree Service, and I'll move approval of that. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. And I vote yes. The next is for, well, this is a bunch of trees and trimming, but I'll try to go through these fairly quickly. Uh, first is for 34th and Atlantic, um, J. Thomas Tree Service. This is for tree and stump removal. Uh, J. Thomas, $475. Dibbles, $500. Uh, Hazlitt did not respond, nor did Asplund. And uh, this is from uh, Gary Walters, and he recommends J. Thomas, and I'll move approval of that. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for two trees at Crescent and Berkeley. Uh, trees and stumps. Dibbles, $1,000. Uh, J. Thomas, no response. And Hazlitt, no response. I'll move that uh, Dibble be awarded that contract. Okay. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. This is for... Uh, trimming or removal of a dead branch high in a tree on Wyoming. Uh, J. Thomas will charge us $100. Dibbles was no response. Hazlitt, no response. And I'll move that Thomas uh, do that tree trimming. Okay, I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grow? Yes. And I vote yes. Tree and stump removal at uh, on Oregon. J. Thomas, $345. Dibbles, $350 and Hazlitt, no response. Uh, it's Gary's recommendation that J. Thomas do that work. I'll move approval. I'll second. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. And the last tree is for uh, two limbs on Madeira. Uh, Dibbles, 
$175. J. Thomas, $170. No response from Hazlitt or Asplin. And Gary's recommending that uh, J. Thomas do that work. I'll remove approval. Okay, I'll second that one too. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is for the uh, 2016 Township Calendar. This is from Judy Zelina. Um, I'll just briefly read what she said um, in her email. Uh, as is the standard township procedure, uh, her office, in an effort to reduce overall expense, sought CoStar certified contractors to design and print the 2016 township calendar. Printing Concepts is the sole local contractor certified by CoStars. Um, it's her recommendation that uh, Printing Concepts be awarded the contract for, actually it's her recommendation that, she, that uh, we lock this in, which we would be able to do, for $21,046 if we wanted to award it to uh, Printing Concepts for 2016, 17, and 18, that they would hold that same price for all three years for the same type calendar. So I guess it's the board's decision if we want to do this for a one-year contract or if we want to lock it in for $21,046 for three years, which is actually slightly less than what we paid last year. Okay. Any preferences from the board? I would say we go with the three-year. Um, price is only going to go up. Uh, they are CoStar certified, uh, which means that they're going to be below bid. Mm -hmm. Typically. Typically. Uh, as long as we have a price that uh, is a three-year guarantee uh, with the inevitability of it going up, I would say go for a three-year contact. John? I think that's a good idea. If we can hold it for three years at that same price, you know, including, you know, I mean, we would be avoiding a, an increase over those three years okay. just, you know, due to inflation or whatever factors might be. Then I would move that uh, Printing Concepts be awarded that contract for three years for $21,046 per year. Okay, I will second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. And from Jerry, actually this is from Lucas Black, uh, foreman in the uh, building maintenance department. Uh, we did have some roof leaks recently. Can you imagine with all the rain? Um, and Jerry Berger and Lucas um, had the contractor who did some of our recent roof repairs come back. Some of the work was covered under warranty, and so they wanted to have the same contractor do the repairs, um, not only to the warranty work, but some other work that was not covered under warranty. And this is from um, Farrell. I think it's Farrell Roofing. And the cost is uh, $2,000 six hundred and eighty dollars for the for the repairs and that would be to uh, the municipal building and uh, I believe some were one of the buildings down below one of the uh, garages so I'll move approval of that I'll second that Mr. McGrath <coughs> yes Mr. Grove yes and I vote yes and that's it okay uh, Number nine, proposed ordinance 2015-10, an ordinance to place on the ballot for the 2015 general election a government study commission question. Mr. Grove? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, this ordinance, uh, let me just read it to you. Uh, I'll, I'll skip the whereas as there's two of them. It is hereby ordained and enacted. Of course, that's pursuant if we do pass tonight. Uh, the Board of Supervisors of Mill Creek Township uh, Erie County, Pennsylvania, it is ordained and enacted as follows. Uh, 1.01, an election shall be held at the 2015 general election on the following question, authorized by section 2911A of the Home Rule Charter and Optional Plans Law. The question shall read as, shall a government study commission of seven members be elected to study the existing form of Mill Creek government of government in Mill Creek Township, Erie County, Pennsylvania, and to consider the advisability and the adoption of a home rule charter, and if advisable, to draft and to recommend a home rule charter. Uh, section 1.02, within five days after enactment of this ordinance, the township secretary or assistant shall file with the Erie County Board of Elections a certified copy of this ordinance, together with a copy of the question to be submitted to the electors. 
uh, 1.03, if any section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, or portion of this ordinance or its application to any person, property, or circumstances is for any reason held invalid or unconstitutional by any court, such holding shall not be construed to affect the validity of the remaining provisions of this ordinance or application for such portions shall be deemed as a separate, distinct, and independent provision from the remaining provisions, which shall be and remain full in force and effect. It is hereby declared the legislative intent of this ordinance that would have been adopted as such valid or unconstitutional practices have not been included herein. So that's the, the cliff notes on it. Uh, this is uh, a different question. As many of you probably know, in 2011, uh, the, uh, the voters uh, approved a question to uh, form a study commission uh, which, opened, uh, which looked at the uh, optional law, uh, optional government law, and uh, uh, that uh, matter uh, at that time, 62% of the voters of Mill Creek Township that voted in that election uh, that answered that question, uh, that, that answered it yes. And uh, uh, to me, that sounds like a, a high amount of people. And uh, this is a different question here. This is something that's far more involved. Uh, I'm not going to lie to anybody. There's a lot of work that goes in it, and it does cost because uh, should there be a decision or a recommendation to uh, change the home rule? A home rule charter has to be developed, and that also has to be recommended to the voters, too. So there is quite a bit involved in this. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it at for right now. And uh, so I'll make a motion to approve that. I don't know if we have to start with a motion on that or not. So. Well, I think we – discussion? <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But we yeah. did this, uh, what, a month ago, I guess yeah, it did. was. Um, if somebody wants to hear my comments or see them, they can get the minutes or the video. But uh, um, like I said at that time, I think that we did this fairly recently, three years ago, and I didn't see the need to do it again. Uh, John, you're right that the question is different, but it's pretty close uh, to being uh, the same yeah. idea, and I just didn't see the, the necessity okay. for doing it uh, again yeah. so soon. So no. I won't be voting in favor of, of okay. this ordinance. Okay. Okay. We have a any further discussion. Well, um, if I can just you know make comment, all due respect to Brian, um, the the question is is different. Yes, that is that is correct, and it's quite a bit different because it's far more involved uh, than the previous question. Uh, we're talking something where uh, township charter would be re rewritten. I know it's quite an undertaking for the township. Uh, the people that uh, if, should this question be successful in November, uh, those who are elected to serve on this commission. Uh, must know in advance that they have quite an undertaking before them. Uh, and it's talking about something that could change the, uh, the history of Mill Creek Township, uh, you know, bring us into a different realm. Uh, keep in mind we have over 53,000 residents here in this township. And uh, I sometimes have questions, actually many times, if we're doing the right thing. But one thing we have to keep in mind, this is something for the voters to decide. Uh, the government that is here uh, is supposed to be other people, for the people, and by the people. Here's a chance for them to make a decision. If they want to look at it, you know, into another form, if they don't, the answer will be no, and that will be the last that we'll talk about it for a while. So the answer is yes, I'm then sure. uh, we will. <laughs> yes, I'm sure of that, yeah. Um, if the answer is yes, then uh, let the uh, study begin, and uh, We'll leave it at that, because I'm sure that this is something that, uh, as I've heard, uh, it is, uh, I've heard people support the idea, and I've also heard people be in opposition to it. And uh, uh, there's no harm in asking the question the way I see it. So uh, uh, that's my support for the, for the ordinance. And of course, I think you know I made a motion on that, so that's where I'm at on it. So. OK, uh, there's a motion to uh, approve the ordinance. Is there a second? Okay, then I'm going to second it. Uh, Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? No. And I vote yes. Okay. Okay, moving on. Resolution 2015-R-14. A resolution to revise and amend Mill Creek Township's towing contractor rules, rates, and regulations. Evan. From time to time, the supervisors adjust the rules and regulations that govern govern the operation of the emergency towing system. Uh, 
since the last time it, the, the rules were revised, the state has passed a law called, um, the tow, I think it's the Towing Storage and Facilities Law, something like that. And it imposes a number of duties on firms that tow and store vehicles. And our concern has been that we need to adapt that so that our rules are consistent with it. And, and maybe even more important, to make sure that the firms that are retained by Mill Creek to do it are aware of the statute and, and comply with it. So most of the changes to the rules, frankly, are to come pretty close to reciting the key provisions of the statute. Because unfortunately, this is one of those times where you can be found to be in violation even if you didn't know it existed. And that's not doing anybody any good. Uh, the police department also suggested that since certain rates, and specifically the, the toes, uh, haven't been adjusted for at least seven years, uh, that they recommended an increase uh, to $85 in non-crash situations, 95 uh, when there is a collision. Uh, and they did some checking and determined that those numbers are still lower than the typical going rate for the same service, which is one of the concerns the supervisors had. So for the purpose of trying to make sure that the firms understand the state law in particular, so they can make a point of, of complying with it, and then to maybe improve a little bit the, the rates being charged, uh, I would recommend adoption of the new rules. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I'll move approval of resolution 2015 R14. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is resolution 2015 R 15, a resolution to authorize exoneration of taxes assessed against mobile homes deemed by the Erie County Bureau of Assessment to have been removed or damaged to an extent rendering them worthless. Revan, or Evan, I'll let you give your your usual spiel on this. Well, this I hadn't seen it until tonight, but basically from time to time, uh, the county asked uh, the, the township and the school district uh, exonerate taxes. What happened is that the assessment office from time to time will go out and inspect a mobile home. Mm -hmm. And if it's gotten to the point in terms of deterioration that it's not fit for habitation, uh, the taxes have to be resolved before anybody can even physically remove it mm -hmm. from, from the lot. Uh, and it also messes up the taxing to rolls because they keep imposing taxes against something that nobody's ever going to be paying the taxes on. So they've recommended that, that we, the township exonerate taxes, and it looks like for 2014, 2012 and 2014 for one, and 2014 on the second, uh, and there are two different mobile homes involved. Uh, and based on, on the fact that the assessment office does the inspection, and makes the recommendation, I would recommend the adoption. Okay, any discussion? Not for me, I'll make a motion to approve that resolution, 2015-R-15. I'll second it. Mr. Groh? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. <clears throat> Next is the appointment of a new township treasurer. Uh, as you might all be aware, uh, Jerry Wolf, our current township treasurer, after 30 plus years of uh, service to the township, has decided it's time to retire. And he will be leaving us uh, July, at the end of July of this year. Uh, he has uh, graciously uh, agreed to uh, help beyond that with the transition of uh, the new uh, individual that we're hiring tonight. Uh, you know, Jerry, congratulations on your retirement, of course. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I know you can't wait for it. I'll be six months behind you. <laughs> uh, we did an exhaustive search uh, for this. We actually employed the uh, um, HR consulting firm of JL Nick, and uh, we did a, a pretty extensive search, interviews, uh, and uh, backgrounds, and so on and so forth. And uh, one individual seemed to always rise to the top. Uh, and this is the individual that uh, our HR, Diane Lyons, is recommending that we hire tonight. 
Um, his name is Mark Zaset. Sorry, Mark. Mark Zaseski. Uh, Mark comes to Mill Creek Township with over 25 years of executive level accounting experience. He is a certified public accountant. Mark earns his Bachelor of Science in Accounting from John Carroll University and his Master of Business Administration from Loyola College. Mark has completed all of his pre-employment requirements successfully. Uh, Mark will be hired. His start date will be July 13th and uh, the rate at which he's being hired is $90,000. Um, I think we're all familiar. We've all interviewed and talked to Mark. Is there a motion for uh, Mark to be hired? I'll move that uh, we hire Mark Zuchesi. We're going to work on that, Mark. We're going to work on that. <laughs> Zuchesi, uh, as the uh, new township treasurer. And I will second that. Can we, can we just call him Mark Z? Can we that, do that? That'll be okay. much better. Yeah. Be, uh, okay. Mr. McGrath. Yes. Mr. Grill. Yes. And I vote yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mark. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Next is a non-substantial land development plan amendment. There's actually three of them. Uh, the first is the hammocks at Mill Creek Phase 2. It was approved at the meeting of 10-28-2014. Mr. Morris. The hammocks has decided to relocate their sanitary sewer and their water lines that service buildings 800 and 900. Uh, and along with that are corresponding easements. So we recommend approval. It has no impact other than it gets the lines out away from a flood detention base and overflow. Okay. Is there any questions from the board? No. I'll, I'll move approval of the uh, land development plan amendment. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is an amendment to 2215 Powell LLC. It was uh, originally approved at the meeting of 127 2015. Mr. Morris. This involves a building to be located 25 feet further to the east, and it also involves the corresponding changes to the stormwater piping to the flood detention basin to the north. We recommend approval. Discussion from the board? Questions? Okay. I'll move approval. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is the MFLP Tenant Plaza. It was approved at the meeting of 11-11-2008, previously amended on 1-20-2015. Mr. Morris. On this one, the developers want to include the addition of an entrance canopy and a stair tower. And they'd like to reconfigure the handicapped parking spaces. Recommend approval. Okay. Discussion or questions from the board? No. I'll move approval. I'll second that. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grill? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is a sidewalk deferral agreement. Dennis F. and Lori Miller, 5201 Lancaster Road. Mr. Morris? There are no sidewalks in the immediate area, and they've completed the agreement. We recommend approval of the sidewalk deferral agreement. Questions from the board? No. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve that sidewalk deferral for Dennis and Lori Miller, 5201 Lancaster Road. I'll second it. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is a request to refund bond. Susan Van Cleef Real Family Limited Partnership at 924 Marshall Drive. Mr. Morris? Sorry, I'm not aware of this one. This comes from this comes from zoning. Um, this comes from zoning. Susan I'm sorry, Van Julie. Cleave Real Family Limited Partnership, 924 Marshall. There was a fire, and they're requesting their bond money to be returned to them. Questions or discussion from the board? This, is this at Act 98 money we're talking about? Fire the loss. Correct. Fire to fire insurance loss. Okay. Fire and it was yeah. rebuilt. It was torn down. Okay. Torn down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll make a motion to approve that uh, that release. I'll second it. Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is a request to refund, or I'm sorry, next is the financial security release, Westminster Place Partnership, 2530 Village Common Drive, Westminster Place Partnership developer. Mr. Morris? 
this project originally had two buildings planned the second building was never constructed in the storm water was not graded to the property was not rated so the storm water would flow to the catch basin so it was in violation of the storm water management plan they have since corrected it and we recommend release of the letter of credit in the amount of $33,721 held by First National Bank number 1048 questions I'll move approval I'll second Mr. McGrath yes Mr. Groff yes and I vote yes next is a travel authorization request Pennsylvania land laws seminar this is for the engineering department from Mr. Morris he's requesting permission to send Ann Sokol assistant township engineer and Matt Waldinger land development coordinator to the Thursday August 6, 2015 Pennsylvania land laws seminar in Pittsburgh PA the cost is $269 each plus meals and lodging for one night and travel will be by township vehicle Rick is there anything you'd like to say about the school or anything no this is something that we deal with quite commonly and it would be a good thing to catch up on the laws will Ann get CLE credits for this or CEU credits I mean yes ok good ok I'll make a motion to approve that travel request I'll second it Mr. Gurl yes Mr. McGrath yes and I vote yes communications Jerry I don't have anything right well I'll do the parks and recreation summer program employees the first is Julia Eckendorf as a water safety instructor at 950 Michael Molnar assistant supervisor for day camp at $10 Abigail Krzyzewski Chestnut Hill lifeguard at 765 Megan Mitchell Bell Valley pool lifeguard 950 Andrew Link Bell Valley pool lifeguard 845 and Sarah Preshak a lifeguard at Chestnut Hill pool for 765 I'll move approval of those summer season employees ok and I'll second all those hirings public comment Mr. McGrath yes Mr. Gurl yes and I vote yes and from Bill Hitchcock in the garage a few things first he would recommend that the trench rescue trailer listed on our vehicle inventory is number 516 it's a cargo trailer be donated to Westridge or I'm sorry Westlake Fire Department the trailer was purchased by the township in 2001 for $4,315 it has since been used to carry the equipment for trench rescue Westlake has handled the trench rescue training and the trailer has been housed by Westlake at station 2 for several years and Westlake requested that we just transfer the ownership to them and since they are the ones housing it and utilizing it I would have to say that that's a pretty good idea so I would move that that trench rescue trailer be transferred the ownership be transferred to Westlake Fire Department ok I will second that motion public comment Mr. McGrath yes Mr. Gurl yes and I vote yes the next item Bill would like to recommend that several vehicles and equipment be sent to the heavy equipment sale at the Greater Erie Auto Auction this would be on Saturday August 1st the first is for truck 139 from the streets department it's a 1999 Dodge Ram with 97,087 miles truck 141 again from the streets department it's a 2003 F Ford 250 with 107,077 miles truck 142 from the streets it's a 1992 Ford F350 four wheel drive with 97,262 miles from the sewer department a Cub Cadet mower it's a 2006 mower and from the streets a Dyna Weld trailer it's a 1994 there's also one set of over the tire skid steer tracks you would like to take to the auction and I'll move approval of that I'll second that public comment 
Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Girl? Yes. And I vote yes. And finally from Bill, um, he placed in the 2015 budget money to purchase a new lift for Garage 2. Uh, since that time, he feels that the lift in Garage 1 is actually more critical. Um, the lift is the lift that he would like to replace in Garage 1 is at least 42 years old. Uh, there are only two suppliers for the in-ground lifts. Rangers uh, supplied a quote of $12,900 and Jemco a quote of $13,940 and Bill recommends that we go with Rangers for $12,900 and I'll move approval of that. I'll second that. Public comment? Uh, just so everybody knows too, this is being replaced uh, primarily because the safety locks on it are no longer functional. So it, it, it would be a safety hazard. Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Girl? Yes. And I vote yes. That's all I have. Thank you. I have a few things from the police department. Uh, first is permission for the LECOM Wellness Center to conduct a 5K run on the streets of Eastern Mill Creek Township on Saturday, August 1st, 2015, from approximately 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The run will begin at the LeCom Wellness Center on West 54th Street and proceed eastward through the streets of Winchester Heights before turning westward and ending back at the starting point. LeCom is going to provide uh, employees and volunteers to serve as road marshals and additionally Kearsarge Fire Department Fire Police and two MPD, MPD officers at the reimbursed overtime rate will provide traffic control. Uh, the intent of the run is to promote a healthy lifestyle, encourage physical fitness, and increase the awareness of the Mill Creek Health Systems. Uh, LECOM has provided us their insurance statement, uh, the liability insurance statement regarding this, and I would recommend approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Second is for permission for Eagle Radio Technologies to install a battery backup system to the MPD radio transmitter located on Lancaster Road. This project is necessary to ensure all police radio communications remain functional in the event of a power outage. Total cost, including labor, is $2,595.08, which was pre-approved in the 2015 MPD budget. Uh, the quote from Eagle Technologies attached. Uh, and I would recommend approval. Second that. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. <clears throat> and I vote yes. Third is for permission for Lieutenant Michael Kabasinski to attend the National Institute of Truth Verification Recertification Conference to be held in Orlando, Florida from January 4th through January 8th. Total costs, which include airfares, meals, hotel, and tuition, are estimated at $1,750. This training is required in order for Lieutenant Kapusinski to remain certified in his use of the Computer Voice Stress Analyzer, which is an instrument utilized by MPD in criminal investigations to detect truth or deception. And I would recommend approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Next is per, for permission for MPD Terminal Agency Coordinator Steve Smith to attend the 2015 Association for Public Safety Communication Officials Conference in Washington, D.C. From August 16, 2015 to August 19, 2015, Smith will voluntarily cover expenses <coughs> for lodging, meals, and tolls, while Mill Creek Township would cover the $450 registration fee and fuel in the use of a township vehicle. And I would make a motion for approval. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. Grill? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. Lastly, the Mill Creek Township Board of Supervisors would like to announce the hiring of two probationary police officers retroactive to June 29, 2015. These inv individuals are Luke R. Passerotti, age 25, from Northeast, and Jacob Washick, age 25, from Mill Creek Township, Erie, PA. Luke attended Northeast High School, 
obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from California University of Pennsylvania and graduated from the Municipal Police Academy at Mercyhurst Northeast University. Jacob attended McDowell High School, obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Mercyhurst University and graduated from the Municipal Police Academy at Mercyhurst Northeast University. These hirings are conditional pending the passing of physical and psychological exams. Uh, this will boost the complement of the Mill Creek Township Police from 60 to 62 officers. Uh, these individuals, if hired tonight, will be sworn in at uh, a date yet to be announced. But I would uh, make a motion to recommend the hiring of Luke Passerati and Jacob Washa. Okay. I will second that motion. Public comment? I, I have a comment, and um, it's in regard to the fact that we are hiring officers that were not budgeted. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is we have how many do we have out right now, Jerry? Four. Five. Five. Five, five officers. Five officers um, out of service right now. Uh, injured both on and off duty. Uh, so we are, in our busiest season, very short-handed. And it is uh, the chief's recommendation that we need to replace some people. Um, I would, as part of this, um, I know that we're just going to hire the fellas tonight, but I think that the board needs to consider then um, at the next retirement, uh, which we are going to have some, not too distant future, correct? From the January. 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 No, two of my um, Question whether or not we would, in fact, um, retain the 62 uh, police officers or whether at that time we would be able to go back to the 60. Um, I guess it a lot depends on the budget for next year, but like I say, 62 police officers was not in this year's budget, so we're going to have to find the money someplace. But our only other option is to leave the police department severely shorthanded for uh, the rest of the summer and, and fall. So um, just a word of caution to, to the board that we need to take a close look at this budget time as to whether or not we're going to uh, continue to uh, have 62 police officers or whether the complement would return to 60 with the retirements at the at the first of the year. Yeah. Let's Just also comment. Thank let's also well, I'm sorry, let's also keep in mind that uh, the union contract for the police is up the end of this year. We're just getting into negotiations now with that. So uh, some of that could even hinge on what the contract the results are. So, Good point. You know, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, we'll keep Mill Creek safe as we can. Thank okay, you. we have a motion and a second. I don't know if I called for public comment. Any public comment? Okay, Mr. Grove? Yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I vote yes. And I think that's, oh no, I have two announcements here uh, from the Mill Creek Township Water Authority. Uh, the Mill Creek Township Water Authority has reinstituted a cost reduction program aimed at encouraging property owners who are not on the Mill Creek Township Water Authority public water system to connect. Property owners should contact Mr. Dave Wright technical manager at the Mill Creek Township Water Authority, telephone number 835-6721, to learn if their location is along any of the water lines the program includes. Uh, basically what's happened is uh, the Water Authority has, has done projects, and uh, on those projects, many people perhaps didn't connect to the water. Uh, they might have been on wells and opted not to connect to the water. Um, what has happened is that uh, the cost for them to connect has escalated exponentially due to what's called an ENR. Uh, it's uh, a, a methodology by which they increase the cost to connect. Uh, the Water Authority is uh, putting this plan out so that potentially new customers on these uh, services would pay less to connect to the Water Authority than they would normally at this point in time. Keep in mind that no one who would connect today would pay less than those who connected originally. So that's just an announcement from the Water Authority. They'd uh, like people to be aware of that. Did we do that? Was that in your packet? Oh, well, I'll do that next time. Yeah. Uh, second is another announcement from the Milk Creek Township Water Authority. Uh, 
every resident who is a uh, customer of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority will be receiving a letter in the mail. And basically it's important information about your drinking water. Uh, the Water Authority does sampling of water every month. And uh, in the previous month, uh, they got two samples, one in the far west portion of the township and one in the far east portion of the township, which showed uh, coliform. Uh, now, coliform is not a dangerous substance in and of itself. Uh, it, it occurs naturally in nature. Uh, it can be an indicator, in some cases, of a greater problem with the water. In this particular case, however, uh, these two samples came back. Uh, they were, the samples were retested or new samples were taken within 72 hours and both samples came back clean. Uh, there are several reasons that, uh, that a bad sample might be gotten. Uh, it varies all the way from there is actually some coliform present to uh, uh, some type of uh, contamination in the vessel that they were using to collect the water. Uh, it can even go as far as the technician who uh, does the samples and, and uh, analyzes them uh, might not have worn proper protection. So I guess basically what I can say is that the water is safe. There's no reason to, to get excited about it. It's a naturally occurring thing. And within 72 hours, those uh, various sites were sampled a second time and all the water was found to be clean. However, according to state regulations, um, every person who is a customer of the Mill Creek Township Water Authority needs to receive this letter. And this letter goes into a little more detail, but uh, basically it just uh, uh, parrots what I told you. Okay, one more thing. Um, from Diane Lyons, our HR, uh, could we please approve the purchase of safety shirts? Uh, we have safety shirts which we uh, give to our uh, employees who are working out on the roadways, the people that are paving, they're doing flagging, uh, anything like this. It's uh, an official shirt with the township seal on it. Uh, we order these uh, every couple years. Uh, we're due to order them now. The cost is $1,979.40. We'll be ordering them for, from Creative Imprints. Uh, they have held the pricing for these shirts uh, the same as they did three years ago. And they are also a Mill Creek Township business. So uh, I would recommend that uh, we purchase the safety shirts at a cost of $1,979.40 going to Creative Imprints. Okay. I'll second that. Public comment? Mr. McGrath? Yes. Mr. Grove? Yes. And I vote yes. Now that's all I have. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Do uh, you want me to just go right into building report? Yeah. I have nothing. Okay. I'm sorry. Just Building report. Building report. Okay. Uh, we did have construction in May. Not a whole lot of it. Uh, eight additions onto homes, single family dwellings. Uh, one uh, addition onto a restaurant, uh, so on. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of new stuff going on, uh, but we had a total construction value between residential and commercial of $729,909. Of course, these reports are available online. I think it'll be on there by Friday, and uh, if it's not on there now, and if you need a paper copy, you can always go to the zoning department where they will gladly give you a copy of it. So that's all I have. Evan. I don't have anything. Cheryl. Julie? Rick, anything more? Citizens to be heard. If you could please give us your name and address and please sign in. Uh, Michael Simon, 304 Prescott Boulevard. Uh, I just want to comment on, uh, I'm tired of these uh, seniors coming from the Joy Center commenting about Ashley. She's doing a fantastic job in the Parks and Rec, and she's very qualified. And uh, if they can do the job, then they should go do the job. Thank you, Mike. Is there anyone else? 
Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Fenton James, <coughs> excuse me, 4253 Westlake Road. And uh, you, you're asking us, uh, well, you're putting a motion on the, uh, on the ballot uh, to whether we want a, another study commission or not. Yes, uh, I was active tonight. The yep. previous <coughs> excuse commission, me. and I understand this is for the home rule, am I correct? That is correct, sir. Yep. Okay. The previous commission also, uh, to my understanding from uh, Mr. Prozan, they did uh, look into this. They have some information that might be useful to, to us. I mean, I don't care one way or the other whether we, we do it or we don't. Okay. But what I'm saying is they already have information that would be available to us. Mm -hmm. I would like you folks to ask Mr. Prozan and the council, whoever would want to come, to discuss what the home rule is about, what mm -hmm. that staffing might look like as far as administrative staff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse my voice. And then also, my understanding is that they've also looked into some of the detail that would be involved in uh, mm -hmm. the process of changing from what we now have to the yeah. home rule. Okay. Uh, and I understand that from his comments last week, that that can be quite uh, extensive. And I would ask you folks to invite me. You're yes. suggesting before November. Pardon? Pardon? You're suggesting that be done before November so that people have an oh, idea of I, what? I'm suggesting that you have the next meeting. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. I'm suggesting that and, and get the information out to the people in, in the community so right. that we know what we're voting on. Right, yeah. And why the, we're voting. Right. And, uh, because, as you said, you know, it's a big undertaking. It is. And, and from Most what definitely. Mr. Roseanne said, it is a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. And if you already have that information, or some of that information, at least in a report that they did, I think you sure. should share that information with the community. That is correct. And ask them to do it. Okay. Good idea. Yes. Very good. Thank you. If you want to make a motion about doing that, that <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to talk to the study commission first. Yeah. Or the, the former study commission. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Mr. Prozan already said that yeah. he would volunteer his time. Yeah. Okay. And, and well, anybody else that would yeah. want to join him. Yeah. No, if, if, you're, if you're serious about doing this, then, right. then make the information available to us. Right. Yeah, if I, if I could expand. Are you done there, sir? I didn't want to interrupt your, your, yeah, com your comments there. I thank you for your comments. Um, to expand just a little bit, I don't want to belabor this. Uh, the, uh, the, the point that I want to get at is that this action that the, the board just took tonight uh, is the, really the limit of the uh, power that the board has over anything like this. Uh, if, the commit, if the study commission question is approved and the study commission members are elected, um, then it's up to that study commission to do this work. Our job is done as far as anything that we would have power to enact this or that. I understand, uh, I understand what, yeah. what you're saying. Right. What I'm saying is that you already have information oh, yeah. based yeah. on the pre previous com com uh, committee. Right and share that information with the folks so Why? when they go to vote Why, sure. they're on a new commission or not, they have some knowledge of what, what the home rule right. is going to be about and whether right. they re really want to restudy it. Okay. Rather they're, than going into the voting booth blind, not right. knowing what home rule even no means. Idea what the right. Voting for. And let's keep in mind there was also a minority report done too, which come up with a different conclusion. So we've got conflicting information. So. Well. Yeah. Well, but right. I don't think that your, I don't think your suggestion is uh, rehash what the study commission uh, recommended. I think that what you're saying is yeah. let that former study commission explain what home rule means. Yeah, what, what yeah. the home oh, rule yeah. means, you okay. know, an idea of what that staff oh, would okay. be in, in home rule, you know, as okay. far as administrative staff, mm -hmm. okay. and, and some idea of what the process is. Oh to get the home rule. Okay. I mean, it's, it's not like it's oh, yeah. well, changing me, the, the, yeah. the paperwork. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, let me expand just a little bit more. I will be uh, taping a program for our uh, cable channel, the, the Milka Government Access Channel, 
I'll be doing it later in July uh, with a gentleman named Ed Fosnott, who is with the Department of Community and Economic Development. Uh, he's from the Pittsburgh area, and he's a specialist in, the, in local government matters, including this, and we will be discussing this. Of course, no opinions uh, would be offered by him uh, or myself. It's just a matter of the technical aspects. Of what does home rule mean? And uh, those are the questions that uh, would be answered. And it's, it's something to educate the public on, because when you think of home rule, some people think, well, what, who, what do you mean home rule? Um, and this will hopefully give a better explanation and an education to the public of what it's all about and how serious a matter it is. So I, I, I appreciate I think, it. I think yeah. that's a fine idea. Yeah, yeah it's already been scheduled for the end of the month, end of July. It would be an additive to what, oh, yeah. the, what the local committee already knows. Why, sure, yeah. And, I'm, uh, not, I'm not asking to make, to make a decision. Oh, Th okay. Just inform us as, as to yeah. what they already found out. Yeah, yeah, so actually, thank yeah. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else? Hearing none, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. A second. Uh, we're adjourned at 7.57. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.